All right, welcome electricians. All right, today we're gonna to talk about diagnostics. Um, before we get into the nitty gritty of it, um, I just wanna mention a few things. First of all, the most valuable part of us electricians skill set is the knowledge in our heads. That is the most valuable thing we have, okay? Customers need to pay for that knowledge. It doesn't matter if it takes you five seconds, 15 minutes, 30 minutes to figure out the problem. They're not paying you for the five minutes, the 15 minutes, the one hour of time. They're paying you for the years of experience that you have to figure that out in 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 45, 90 minutes, whatever, whatever it is. So just because it takes you 15 minutes to find uh, that, you know, a certain switch on the wall runs an outlet, it doesn't matter. They have to pay for your knowledge. Just because you walk downstairs and you open up the panel and you see that a a breaker is tripped, and and maybe it's like a, uh, a uh, like a like a square D, that that you know trips in the middle, and maybe it's a home line, right where there's no there's no red flag, on it. Just because you know that you know what to look for doesn't mean that your knowledge you shouldn't get paid for. All right, those are the easy ones. Obviously, when we start taking tools out, we start opening up outlets and switches and so on and so forth. We got to get paid for our knowledge, not our time. We're, the customer is buying our knowledge and not buying our time, okay? When you go into the doctor's office, generally, the doctor, him or herself, are only in there, in the room, for maybe five, 10 minutes. The rest is all the nurse. But you're getting charge two three hundred dollars right well you know and everybody's like oh the doctor doesn't charge two hundred dollars an hour no the doctor charges like eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars an hour if you figure the time they're actually with you all right so we get paid for our knowledge not for our time. first thing i'm going to say second thing is there's four different types of service calls four different types of calls we run the first type is an install call that's a customer calling saying, I want a light fixture installed. I want a car char a vehicle charger wired. I want a hot tub wired. Um, I want a doorbell installed. I want recessed lights putting my living room, whatever. That's an install call, all right? In the customer's mind, there's nothing broken in the home when you arrive to those types of calls, all right? Another type of call is a safety inspection of a home or maybe a, you might call them a club membership inspection. That's when, again, they really don't think anything's wrong with the home, but you're showing up just to make sure the home is safe, all right? Then we have repair calls. This is when we're going to a home where they called because something isn't working, something's broken in the home, all right? And then the last type of call is a warranty or a callback. And again, a warranty and a callback is something is broken in the home, it just might be that you've been there before. Maybe you did the work, maybe you didn't do the work, but you've been there before. So it's a warranty or a callback. I'm gonna focus on just the repair one today. So you are on the way to a home. You haven't been there recently to this home. Something is broke and they want you to fix it, all right? These are usually in the residential model, uh, one of the most favorite calls technicians like to run because for a few reasons. One, we're not in a usually a multi-bid situation. Two, I get to actually troubleshoot some stuff and use my brain, right? It's kind of fun in a way to figure out the problem, all right? And three, usually they're good money calls because there's urgency built already before you get there. Now, a little plug for me and my coaching. I have a way to make all four of those calls have urgency and to turn all four of those calls into repair calls. But we're not going to get into that today. So here we go. Diagnostics. The rule at my company and any company I coach is if you are on the way to a call and there is something broken in the home, 
the customer is calling because something isn't working. We sell a diagnostic before we even bring tools into the house. You don't bring tools into the house until a diagnostic is sold because they haven't paid you for your knowledge yet. And if you bring tools into the house, you're going to start opening stuff up and you're not going to have, you won't charge them anything. And then before you know it, you're so deep into it, you can't go back and charge the customer. So just don't bring the tools into the house until the customer approves a diagnostic. Okay, you can maybe bring in like a like a, a glow tester, a fluke, you know, like the, just the, the chirper or whatever, whatever you call them. You can maybe bring one of those in. Um, maybe if you're trained properly, a circuit analyzer. But other than that, I literally wouldn't bring anything else into the home. Some technicians will be like, well, won't the customers just think I'm a salesman? I've never had the problem. I've ran thousands of service calls. I've never had a customer say, where are your tools when I first walk up to the house? And if by chance one in a million does say it, I would say something along the lines of, well, first I need to evaluate what's going on in your house. I don't even know what tools they need yet, Mrs. Jones. Tell me what's going on, all right? So quick quick rundown. We, run, we come to the home. Right? We introduce ourselves, we build a little rapport with the customer, get to know them a little bit. Don't go straight into business. Remember, the customer is buying you, they're not buying your company or your skill set. They're buying you. You need to humanize yourself. Okay. And the way to humanize yourself is to talk about something other than why you're there today. So build a little rapport, get to know them a little bit. All right. Then they're going to say something like, hey, uh, you know, let's just say my outlets in my living room are, as an example. You'll walk into the living room and you'll say, you'll ask what I call the four W's. Uh, what's going on? Well, my outlets aren't working, okay. When did it happen? Uh, it happened last night. What were you doing when it happened? Uh, I was vacuuming. And then the most important question, which is when were you looking at getting this repair taken care? And on a repair call, very seldom is it anything other than right now, today, as soon as possible. Those should be the answer. All right. The reason I ask that question is because after you give the diagnostic price, they might give you an objection. And when they give you that objection, you can just literally look at them very confused and say, well, Mrs. Jones, I, I thought you said you wanted it fixed as soon as possible. Or I thought you said you wanted it fixed today. Okay, so that's why we, we asked that question. When were you looking at getting the work taken care of? All right, so then they'll say, okay, well, yeah, I want the, I want the work taken care of too. Okay, great, Mrs. Jones. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start my evaluation. There's evaluation and there's diagnostic, two totally different things. Don't get them confused. The evaluation is just us kind of getting our bearings in the house. What's the age of the house? What's the type of wiring in the house? How old is the electrical panel? Um, what kind of wiring conditions are we looking at? What codes were maybe in place the year the home was built? Um, what's the condition of the home? All of these things are your evaluation. And the reason you're gonna do that is because you're gonna try to find out what diagnostic price you feel should be charged for this type of diagnostic. All right, so I'm gonna pull up um, my diagnostic page in the book we used to use. Um, we don't run this model anymore. We run a very, very advanced model now, like I was teasing you before. It turns every call into a, a repair call. Um, but this is what we used to use and use, and it works extremely well. Let me find it here. Okay, so you should be able to see this now. So uh, this is the diagnostic page. So I would, I would have a laminated sheet of paper or if you still carry a actual open price book, that's fine. Maybe this could be a PDF on an iPad. 
doesn't really matter what way you want to do. But after I did my evaluation, I would sit down, preferably at a counter or a table, and I would open this page up or something similar and say, Mrs. Jones, what I recommend doing is what we call a system diagnostic. By the way, I always like to call it a system because it's not an outlet, it's not a switch, it's not a light, it's an electrical system. It's all tied together, all right? A system diagnostic. There's really only three reasons why your system will fail. It could be a faulty wire, it could be a faulty part, or it could be a bad connection, or it possibly could be a combination of all three. When you explain that, don't give examples. Don't say, you know, like an outlet, like a breaker might have went out. Um, you know, maybe there's a bad connection in that switch right there. You don't have to overcomplicate it. Stick to what the page says. Read it. It's going to be okay. You don't have to overcomplicate this. You don't have to overtalk. Keep it simple. All right. Mrs. Jones, your electrical system starts at your electrical panel. The power comes from your electrical panel and it generally goes in one outlet and then it goes to another outlet and then it goes to another outlet. It might go to a switch, it might go to a light, it might go back down to an outlet, it might go to a switch and another outlet, another outlet. So Mrs. Jones, I know you say your one outlet in your living room doesn't work, but the odds are very slim that the problem is in that outlet. There's a good chance that it could be anywhere in the circuit, Mrs. Jones. So what a diagnostic includes is an unlimited time to find the problem. An unlimited amount of time to find the problem. I know there's companies out there who are like, well, I charge $200 for the first half hour. And then if I need more, I charge more. And you guys, if you learn the system right, you don't need to do that stuff, okay? All it does is make the customer think of what you're charging per hour, or they start um, watching you, you know, how much time, how much money, how much time, how much money. Is he lazy? Is he hurrying up? If you take a phone call in the middle, they're thinking, are you getting billed? Are they getting billed for that? Just stop it. Unlimited amount of time to find the problem. And if you find out there's issues with that, call me because you're not doing something. Okay, so I'm going to give an unlimited amount of time to find the problem. I'm going to open up your electrical panel. I'm going to inspect each outlet and switch box, and I'm going to run tests on the wiring through your home. A level one or two minor repair is included. So if it is just something simple, Mrs. Jones, it's included in the price. Again, don't give examples. But what it really does is it confirms that the circuit is safe and reliable. Then I look at the customer in the eyes, I shake my head and say, that is what you want, isn't it, Mrs. Jones? And she'll say, well, of course. And I'll also be able to give you a one-year warranty as long as you follow all of my recommendations for the repair. Now I have four different levels. And I will already know which level I'm going to propose in my head before I even meet with the customer. But let me just go through these with you. A level four, and by the way, these prices on here, this is a very old sheet. Our prices are probably double this by now. I have just an old one that I have. You can use whatever prices you feel like you want to use. Um, all right, a level four is a single circuit containing multiple failures. Uh, I'm sorry, there should be a comma there. So it's a single, it's not, it should be, a single circuit containing multiple fillers up to two circuits. It's, this, this is an old version. So really, it's if they have two problems in the house. So let's say you arrive to the same um, example I was saying, that you arrive to the home, they say, my outlets in my living room aren't working. And they say, oh, and while you're here, how often does that happen? While you're here, I have a motion light on the front of my garage that's also not working. Could you take a look at that while you're here? More than likely, that's two separate circuits. <clears throat> we do circuit diagnostics. We don't do light fixture diagnostics. We don't do light switch diagnostics. We do circuit diagnostics. Why? Because I'm giving them a one-year warranty. They're, they're not going to have any problems on that circuit. So I'm going to check out the whole circuit. I'm not just going to look at one light or one outlet. 
It's not fair to me. It's not fair to the customer. I also can't confirm the sake it is the circuit is safe and reliable if I don't look at the whole thing. All right. So when you get to a home and they have multiple things, let's say they have two things aren't working. It's very odd that the living room outlet would be tied on with the garage light fixture. Now, if you happen to start diving into this, they approve the diagnostic, you start taking out your tools and you find out that the outlet in the living room and the, the light on the garage are the same circuit, you can lower the price. They're not going to complain, I promise you, if you take money off of it. But if you come back and add it later, they're going to be upset. All right? So two circuits. That's what a level four does. If it's an arc fault um, or a fire guard breaker, we charge a level four also. And that's not two circuits. That's one. If they have an arc fault breaker tripping, that is a level four every single time because we know they are time consuming number one two we are giving them a one-year warranty that they're not going to have any issues on the circuit other than plugging things in all right and they usually take a while and you might get some callbacks all right so level four level three is a single circuit containing multiple rooms this is the most common one. So let's just use my example of the living room outlets aren't working. There's probably a good chance that maybe if there's a wall that is between the bedroom and the living room, there's a good chance that maybe an outlet in the bedroom is tied on with the living room. Or maybe there's a dining room and the light, fi the light fixture in the dining room is tied on with the living room outlets. That's multiple rooms. We charge more because we have to pull more devices out of the wall, all right? Or if the wiring is over 40 years old, AKA knob and tube wiring, aluminum wiring, tar cloth wiring, et cetera, all right? A number two diagnostic is a single dedicated circuit to a single point of use. So maybe um, their outlet for their laundry, uh, their, 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 their clothes washer isn't working. And you're in a newer home and you're like, well, in a home this new, there should be a dedicated 20 amp circuit going to that room. It shouldn't take me very long. I can do a level two on this one. Or maybe they call you and they say, hey, my dishwasher is not working. And I would say, okay, well, again, that might be a level two because it should be a dedicated circuit to the dishwasher. Those are examples. Or maybe I have no power to my hot tub or to my pool pump, something like that. Shouldn't take you too long to figure it out, right? And a level one is a single appliance or known device. Uh, a common one is my ceiling fan doesn't work. So you arrive to the home, they say my ceiling fan doesn't work, but in your evaluation, you find out all the outlets are working, all the other lights are working, everything seems to be working fine, except the ceiling fan. Now I personally would charge a level three to check out the entire circuit that that ceiling fan is on because I want to make sure the whole circuit is safe and reliable. And then if the customer says, are you kidding me? You know, as an example with the sheet, $598 just to look at my ceiling fan. I'm like, well, Mrs. Jones, that's not just to look at your ceiling fan. That's again, to look at the whole circuit. I don't know if the problem's in your ceiling fan or it could be anywhere in the circuit. And then they might say, I'm not spending that much. And you can say, okay, well, how about this, Mrs. Jones? I'll do, how about this? I'll, I can do a level one, but all I'm going to do is go out my truck, get my ladder, go up there and make sure you have power up there. If you do have power up there, then it must be something wrong with your fan. If you don't have power up there, Mrs. Jones, we're probably going to have to do a level three because there's, there's, there's no power getting, there's, some, there's a problem somewhere else in the circuit. So every time you propose a diagnostic, it should be two, three, or four. 
very, very rarely should it be a one. But what I see a lot is technicians charging a whole bunch of level ones because it's the cheapest diagnostic in their price book and it's the easiest to sell. So they keep selling level ones. And if you have hourly employees, you're gonna get your ass kicked because they're gonna charge a level one for let's say in this example, $378. And they'll spend, let's say two hours diagnosing an arc fault circuit. And you just don't have enough money there to pay somebody two hours or three or four hours for $378. So they gotta charge the right amount for the job, all right? Remember I said earlier, when I was explaining this to the customer that a level one or two minor repair is included. Now, I will show you this real quick. If you have a trademark pricing system that uses levels, this is not mine, this is a uh, customer of mine. This is his price book, but notice down here, a level one or two minor repairs included. Okay, this is the same page we were looking at. This is the page next to it. A level one or two. One level one or two minor repair is included. And I know you can't read this. That's on purpose because these are usually trademarked. But a level one or two minor repair is replacing one outlet, one switch, one three-way switch, a GFI, a photo cell, some minor, fairly inexpensive part, all right? Now, after you propose that, let me just go back to that uh, page real quick. So I'm just gonna run through this real, I, I did that very slow but I'll run through it like I was explaining to a customer. All right, so Mrs. Jones, what I recommend doing is running what we call a system diagnostic. There's generally only three reasons why your system fails. You might have a faulty wire, you might have a faulty part, or you could have a bad connection. Or it's possibility that you have a combination of all three of those. Now, Mrs. Jones, the electrical starts at your electrical panel in your garage or your basement. It generally goes to an outlet, then to another outlet, to another outlet, it might go to a switch, it might go to a light fixture, it might go to another switch, another outlet, so on and so forth. So it's very slim that the problem is actually in the device you're talking about. It could be anywhere between the panel and, the, and the, your device not working. So what the diagnostic includes is an unlimited amount of time to find the problem. I will find why this isn't working today, Mr. Jones. I'm gonna open up your electrical panel. I'm gonna inspect each outlet and switch box and I'm gonna run tests on the wire. Now a level one or two minor repair is included. So if it is something simple, it's included in the price. But what it really does is confirms that your circuit is safe and reliable. And that is what you want, right, Mrs. Jones? And then as long as you follow my all of my recommendations, I'm actually gonna give you a one year warranty that you're not having these issues anymore, all right? Now, Mrs. Jones, you said your outlets in your living room aren't working today. And so that would be a level three because it's a single circuit containing multiple rooms. Um, your living room is tied on with your bedroom or a different room, you explain that. Um, and then you all, now that is to do the living room. If you want me to do the living room and check out that motion light that you talked about, that would be a level four to do both. So which one would you rather do, Mrs. Jones? You want me just to focus on the living room or would you like me to take care of the living room and the motion? Um, and then also Mrs. Jones, just to remind you that a level one or two repair is included in the price. So if something is simple, it will be included. So what would you like to do, Mrs. Jones? Would you like to do both the motion light and the living room or just the living room? And you shut up, do not talk. And more than likely, they're just going to pick one. And if you have a club membership, this is a great time to say, okay, and would you like to pay full price or would you like to pay our club membership price? And this might be the time they sign up for a club membership to get a discount if your company does that. All right. Last thing I'm going to say about this. After you run the diagnostic, 
this is probably the most important part of this whole video. After you run the diagnostic, you will write up three options every single time. This is not the end all be all. The customer just started shopping when they bought the diagnostic. It, it's not over at all. This is just the beginning. This is the gateway drug to sales, all right? After they buy the diagnostic, you're going to find the problem. You're gonna complete your safety evaluation of the home. And then you're gonna come up with three options. More than likely, it's gonna be at least 1,000 to 2,000 your bottom option and all the way up to 20 to 30,000 on your top option, unless it's a very new home. That's a whole nother train, that's a whole nother video. All right, but don't just charge a diagnostic because if that's if you're getting a whole bunch of diagnostics and you're not creating three options after the diagnostic and you're not selling larger jobs, you need to hire me to train you how to do it because you're losing thousands and thousands of dollars every single call. I'm Kent Bull. Thank you.